What's up today, guys? I'm gonna give you three essentials to caring for your coronavirus patient. Cut to the intro. The first thing we have, guys, is the Vortran VAR Plus, it's also called Go to Vent, is the new one. Extremely important to have these in case you run out of ventilators. Uh, obviously, my facility is not in that, uh, in that boat yet, but we do have these as backup. This is an essential tool. Look up in the description above if you want to go to my video that shows you how to set one of these up. I did it about a year ago, and it's getting lots of hits recently. Let's go to the next one. Three, two, one. The next tool that we have is something that's kind of, it's, well, it's rigged, and that's what respiratory therapists do, right? This is the Hudson RCI ISO-NEB. So if you're familiar and you do PFTs or outpatient respiratory therapy, this is what we commonly term as the pentamidine NEB. So the cool thing about this, it's got a series of one-way valves Kind of give you a little bit of a close-up here how this works so a series of one-way valves so air only comes in through here goes to the patient they can inhale it obviously you can see they can inhale it and they can only exhale it through this filter here the cool thing about this filter is it's electrostatically charged 99.999 percent uh, of bacteria and viruses is exactly what it stops so it's really good for that so uh, given nebulizer treatments is kind of taboo when it comes to these uh, suspected COVID or COVID patients because we're aerosolizing the virus. Uh, a couple things that, that uh, we've done at our facility is we use these nebulizers. If the patient can follow directions, we ask them to seal their mouth on it. But then we also uh, have the respiratory therapist wear airborne uh, precautions while they're in the room. This is just something that keeps aerosolization down. So I'm going to give you a quick demo of this. Unfortunately, these bad boys are a little hard to find right now. So you can see, we're nebulizing from the back aspect there. Nothing else is coming out. So seal the mouth on. And at that time I exhaled through this piece right here. So I'll give you a quick example. Watch right here. No particles coming out. It is great for that. So it really helps to hold those particles inside, but they got to keep it in their mouth. If they can't keep it in their mouth, you got to go to MDIs. We've, de debate, we've also debated about nose clips with this, but we haven't gone that far yet. So keeping their mouth to the entire treatment is done. Anybody else in the room still has to wear airborne precautions. You can give the effectiveness of nebulized therapy, the, also the cost of nebulizer therapy is much less too, and um, still maintain that area where you're not aerosolizing all these extra particles. Let's go to the next one. The last one's a simple filter. So this filter isn't very super special in any way at all. You see we have them on, on our V60 here, and by the way, this thing could probably really help us out in one of these disasters because these can also be used as ventilators. They have battery backup on them. They're really great for that. But what we're doing is actually the main problem with something that's going to generate aerosol. So that's what changes these, this patient environment from a droplet to an airborne type of environment. BiPAP, CPAP can generate aerosol. Well, I wonder how. We have a mask sealed on their face. They can obviously leak around the mask. You know, we don't like to have a lot of leak, but we do. But number one is, this is single circuit, right? Whoa, That's, this is single circuit. No inspiratory, expiratory limb, they've got to exhale. It all comes out the little port right there. So the port's really great during normal conditions, but when we're trying to decrease the amount of aerosolized virus, if you will, um, we want to really stop the excess moisture coming out, coming out of there. So 
what we've done absolute jimmyism i'm sure that you can debate it either way you can say it's going to increase pressure or you can say a lot of different things about it but what we're doing is actually putting us a, a filter right here so this doesn't make it absolutely perfect at all because you can still leak out the side of your mask but any of that moisture should be picked up by this filter and not exhaled here and then still allowing them as long as we keep a close eye on this filter make sure it's not clogged that circulation of air which is going to help them ventilate so having this will just pick up any extra particles they're still going to have to be um, nurses or therapists are still going to have to be in airborne precautions in these rooms um, because it could generate droplets but this is kind of like the extra little uh, added um, barrier we'll say for the nurses and the therapists in the room so just uh, maybe cause less aerosolized particles than before so hope you liked my little review of three things that you could use to take care of your covid patients uh, i really appreciate everybody out there respiratory therapists and nurses on the front line uh, you guys uh, are doing amazing things going into uh, work every day knowing that you could be uh, exposed to these things and it really makes me proud to be saying I'm a respiratory therapist um, when across the country and across the world um, and especially across the country respiratory therapists are going into these these areas these uh, locked units these uh, airborne rooms every day because what do we care about we care about taking care of that person there not necessarily fighting the virus but taking care of that person because a lot of those people are the people that we care for that have lung disease. So I appreciate all of you. And um, I'm gonna give you one little thing. Um, and this is a, kind of a, on a personal matter. Um, one thing that I'm gonna tell you that I do every day when I come into this place, and I've done it for the last couple of weeks because um, there's a lot of fluidity right now. A lot of things are changing. And um, I wanna recommend one thing. If you wanna do it, it'd be, it would be really, it's been really awesome for me. On the way into work every day, I listen to Psalms 91. So Psalm 91 from the, from the Old Testament. Listen to it. Look in and see and know that the Lord is your protector. Uh, and I'll tell you something also is that we were perfect, wonderfully and perfectly made human beings. And so it's really important for us as healthcare workers to make sure we're maintaining our body well during these times. Our number one defense is going to be drinking plenty of fluids because our defense is our mucous membranes and so keeping well hydrated is really important because your body was built to fight this stuff your body was built to fight it so combination of staying healthy and i'll tell you what um, reading psalm 91 having it inside of your heart and knowing the lord's going to take care of you is so important so and i guarantee you he will and he will, and he will, and he will again. So thanks for watching. We'll see you later.